Will Medicare beneficiaries pay more for Medicare Part D premiums in 2024 and 2025? Well, here to talk with me about that is Jay O, author of Maximize Your Medicare. Jay, welcome. Thanks for having me, Bob. I, I suppose it's easy to say that they will pay more, but there's more to it than just saying that, isn't it? I think that's right. The Inflation Reduction Act most notably changed a lot of the metrics the math of the way that prices are going to change and the way the Medicare beneficiaries are going to be affected. There's going to be a cap on the average, if you will, at 6% of the increase of basically a standardized set of plans. So on average, there's going to be a cap in effect as a result of the Inflation Reduction Act. That said, average is just a number. And so different people, depending on the plan and the prescriptions where you get them filled, are going to have wildly varying results. So, for example, at the very expensive end, you'll have plans that exceed $100 a month. On the low end, literally in certain states, based on where you live, a Part D plan can cost literally $0 a month. And so you can see, I understand that headlines are attractive. That all said, it doesn't necessarily mean that a person is going to be paying systematic, every person on Medicare is going to be paying systematically more. Right. So um, there was an analysis done by K. KFF in November that suggested that the average monthly premium was $48 in 2024, which was up 21% from $40 in 2023. You mentioned 6% a second ago. Is there a way to square up those 2% increases? Well, I think like I started this by saying about the average, if you will. So what ends up happening is that you've got a standard starting point, if you will, without getting too technical, or you've got a standard setting point. And so all of these numbers can in fact be, you know, coexist, even though they seem very, very different. Bottom line for your audience, Bob, is that I wouldn't draw any specific conclusions from, you know, summary data, but that different people will have different results based on their personal situation, why we really can't have this idea of one size fits all on any, any matter where the health situation and the costs are trying to be controlled. Uh, KFF also noticed a trend, which is that there are now um, fewer uh, standalone pri plan, uh, Part D plans, uh, 21 in 2024, down from um, 24 and 23. Um, is, is this something that consumers, Medicare beneficiaries should be concerned about? I do think so to some degree, which is that it is more a statement of how difficult commercially it is to balance the moving parts here, which is that there are many large pharmaceuticals, they've got to negotiate prices, They've got to negotiate, on the other hand, the distribution, meaning the retailers, the pharmacies. And this moving number of pieces is just very, very complicated. You're trying to also balance that with the money that you're receiving from the federal government. So unless you have a very large, successful, already embedded business, it is a very, very difficult one. So to say that it is not only the beneficiaries that are facing a complicated situation, it is also on the sellers. So is there some bottom line actionable advice for Medicare beneficiaries as they contemplate these increased premiums? Well, I'm here the broken record again, which is, Bob, you know, fairly consistent over the years that we've been speaking, right? And as I have stated from the very first edition of Maximize Your Medicare, which is a stunning now decade ago, which is that one size doesn't fit all and the pieces will inevitably move. Next year, 2024, will be the year that more people turn 65 than any time in American history. 
it is not only the buyers that have to adjust to the changing landscape, it's the sellers also. And the action then is the candid reality is since we know that it's going to be moving around, your best, most efficient solution, I did not say free, most efficient solution can be expected to change going forward. So I'll give you one last final word, which is when I think about helping people estimate what their expenses will be and how much they'll inflate in retirement, I always like to think that you ought to separate healthcare expenses as a separate item. Maybe all other things can inflate at the standard CPI rate, but for healthcare expenses, maybe you want to inflate those at a little bit higher than the uh, current CPI rate and, and, and eager to hear your thoughts about that. Yeah, I think that that is, you know, absolutely reasonable, Bob, which is that it's difficult to conclude that healthcare costs will, that the rise in healthcare costs would be lower than CPI, if you will. That said, as most everyday people know, what the government publishes as CPI used for social security uh, increases, COLA increases, is rarely a precise estimate about their daily cost of living changes. A box of Cheerios costs $7, notably higher than the CPI statistics might suggest. Well, uh, Jay, we covered a lot. Anything we missed or anything just bears repeating? I think that's it for now. I guess the couple of other Part D points are that for those persons that experience very, very high cost of prescriptions, that notable relief is coming immediately in 2024, where the catastrophic stage ends. And in 2025, the $2,000 out-of-pocket maximum limit to Part D will arrive. Well, Jay, as always, it's such a pleasure chatting with you and having you share your knowledge and wisdom with us and our viewers. It's my privilege as always.